Hunting the Menu is proudly brought to you by the Sporting Shooters Association of Australia. Join us at www.org.au. G'day and welcome to Hunting the Menu. On today's show, these angry little guys and a whole lot more. Here's a bit of a look. Come on, come on. Hey! Gotcha. That's one. Here you go. Rabbits as ordered. Gentlemen, how are we? Ah, uh, g'day, Corey. G'day, mate. What this have you got for me? Is your mission. My mission, my yeah, menu? Your mission menu. Ooh, satay crayfish. Shane, fresh water? Fresh water craze, mate. First time for me. Nice, nice. Well, I've got a great spot for them. So, looking forward to them. Yeah, they're great. They're a bit savage, though. Are <laughs> they? <laughs> Be careful. Yeah, you might lose a finger or two. And KFR, mate. It's the old Kentucky Fried Rabbit. Oh, yeah. nice. You got your own sort of secret herbs oh, and spices oh, oh. there, Dawson? We're going to share them, but not with you, only with the audience. Oh, well, I'll just watch the show. You will have to watch <laughs> the show and then go online. Uh, I, I will. I yeah. will. All right, the rabbit Shane, where you reckon we're going to get those? Uh, there's a few bunnies still locally, so we shouldn't have to go too far, Cool. All right, mate. Well, I don't think this is going to take us too long. Most of this is pretty close. Yeah. We'll, we'll see you in a couple of days. I, I noticed that word fish, crayfish. Does yeah. that mean you're taking the boat out again? No, nah, look, stop mentioning the boat. I'll take you out one day. Oh, or I'll oh. send you a photo of it. Uh, <laughs> see you, Shay. Hey, you go on the boat as well. <laughs> I didn't have the heart to tell Dorso that the crays around my area live in streams that wouldn't even float a canoe, let alone a boat. So on this adventure, it was gonna be mainly on foot. The locals around my area call them crawchies, not freshwater crays. And the local pub used to have a special crawchie day with races and prizes for the biggest crawchie caught. They can be found in rivers from South Australian Victorian border to far North Queensland. But in saying that, you won't find them in every freshwater river and stream. So it is a bit of hit and miss until you come across a river that they do populate. And you more than likely will need to go that little bit further, like we are today, to find good numbers. Most people will mistake yabbies for crayfish, but let me tell you, once you see one and then try to pick them up, you'll soon learn the difference. If any creature needed to attend an anger management course, it's these guys. In New South Wales, the bag limit is five, with a legal length of nine centimetres, measured from the back of the eye socket to the centre rear of the carapace. But always check your rules and regs before you head out, as they can change. The tackle needed is simple, a line with a bit of meat on the end, or in our case, some scrap venison. Shane, this weather doesn't know whether it wants to rain or shine today. Not wrong, it's been all over the place, hasn't it? Yes. It's been a bit of fun getting in here anyway. Yeah, nothing like a little bit of full driving to get us to a nice spot away from everyone. Yeah, indeed. I'm looking forward to this. I've never actually caught one before. No, well, you're in for a treat. These things are very prehistoric. Unlike a yabby, they've got armour all over them, they've got spikes, and they're nasty. Their, their claws go past 90, so they're always trying to get you. Oh, I've got my high-tech fishing gear, so... Let's have a go, see how we can. Yeah, you don't need much, do you? No, not Bit really. Bit of looks. <laughs> <laughs> now they get pretty big, do they? Oh, they do. Down in Tasmania, one guy caught one that was six kilos. Really? Yeah. Wow. Uh, not sure I'd like to see that coming out. Hey, look up here, there's one just under the surface. They walk around? Yeah, yeah. 
Yep. Oh, this will be fun. If they're not disturbed too much, you'll see them out yeah, in right. the middle yeah, of the day. Yeah, yep, yep. Come on, come on. Now that's a great example of a spiny crayfish. The only problem is she's in berry. It's a female and it's illegal to take them when they're like this. And you wouldn't want to take them anyway because you want them here in the future. You want your kids to be able to enjoy them, to come up here and be able to catch these and get a feed. So she's going back. Right, got another one here. This is just kind of like yabbying, but these things are a lot bigger than yabby, so it's fishing wine rather than cotton. Here at Swarovski Optic, a lot of time is spent on perfecting a few great things until every idea we touch enhances every moment in the field. For a quarter century, the Swarovski Optic SLC has been making hunters' dreams become reality. Feel the wilderness every time you step outside. We've had a pretty productive afternoon. We've kept two each, just to have a bit of a feed. What we're gonna do is a quick satay. Very simple, again, out of things that you normally take with you, and we should have ourselves a nice little feed. First thing that we've done is we've put them all into an ice slurry again. We've put them to sleep. So what we're gonna do is we're going to first make a little incision through the top of the head to make sure that they're dead. We don't want it. Like so. Just like that, so we know they're dead now. Not a great deal of meat on these, so we're going to separate the nippers. And then using a small sharp knife, very much the same as a saltwater crayfish, we're just going to cut inside around the carapace, around the back of the head here. And it should release the tail meat. Just like so. So we'll keep that. Put that over there. And we're just going to split them in half, just like a normal lobster. Straight down the middle. Now this is a little trick that I learned years ago, um, doing saltwater crayfish, and this should work with these too. Some hot water, which we've just got in our little pot here. You just drizzle it over the tail, gently. It should help to release the tail meat, just like so in there and we're just going to repeat the process until we've stripped all the tails and cut all the claws off. Well there's not much meat in these things but there's not much point in taking a great deal of them to eat because you know they're just such a pretty looking creature. While we're doing that we're just going to crack the claws. This will just help the heat get into them and let them cook a bit quicker. It's a bit like when you're doing chili mud crab just cut the, crack the claws to let a bit of heat into them that's all. Also lets the meat come out a bit easier once they're cooked. So we're also going to cheat a bit. We're going to use microwave rice. Just rip the corner a little bit. Drop it in your belly full of warm water. Let that warm up for about four or five minutes. Our oil certainly sounds like it should be hot enough now, so just drop one top of them in at a time. Bit of a contrast in flavors, satay and Indian, but they work quite well. They don't take long to cook. Probably 20, 30 seconds. Just drain the oil off. And they'll add a nice crispy texture. To our sardine. All right, so we put our wok back on, get it smoking lightly so it's nice and hot. We just drop our claws in. Yeah, make it colour up. The claws are quite thick, so we're going to cook these for a couple of minutes before we do anything else. 
just make sure they're cooked nicely right through. Starting to colour up nicely now, so we'll just let them keep going. All right, once you start getting a bit of white discharge coming out from around the brakes and the claws, you know they're cooked. So now we just want to pop them out. Put your wok back on. We're going to very, very quickly, we're going to do these tails, very quickly. We're going to wait for some heat to come back up. The wok's starting to smoke a little bit. They're only tiny, so we're not going to cook those for long. Okay, they've just changed colour to white on the outside. That's it. Now we're going to do our sauce. It's very quick and very easy. let start with about half a teaspoon of garlic. Fry that off a little bit. A little bit of curry powder. We're going to fry that off as well. That just helps for release all the aromatics that are in it. Some chilli sauce, because I like a bit of bite. Sweet chilli sauce. Sweet flavour comes out really nice. A little bit of soy sauce. And some cream. Just mix that around a bit. All right, so our sauce is thickening up nicely there. Turn our butter in. And that's pretty much it. One satay sauce. All right, so we're going to add the claws to the sardé sauce. Just give them a little toss around. We're not going to put the tail meat in yet because the last thing we want is for it to be overcooked. So while those claws are just quickly simmering away, we're going to get our rice ready. We're now going to throw our tails in. Oh, they look good. Don't want to cook these for very long. The heat in the sauce should be enough to actually cook these. It's going to be very quick. That should be about right. Couple of claws. Looks nice too. They've coloured up quite well, these claws. I was a bit worried about it because they're so hard, but they've come up quite good. Okay, so just get your tail meat on. A bit of sauce over the top. We'll just dress it with a little bit of fresh chopped chilli that we have, not too much. A little bit of colour. There we go. Shane. I've been trying to perfect the perfect time to arrive, it looks like now. <laughs> I think you're doing all right, mate, to be honest. <laughs> oh, look what you've done here, huh? Well, let's have a taste, all right? It certainly uh, looks it, all right. It damn looks good. It's wow, just, hey? I don't want to eat them, they look too good. <laughs> oh, they, they are a great creature, but I've had them before, and they even taste better. They do? Yeah, they do. It really looks beautiful. I can smell the peanut butter in it. Wow, they're tender, aren't they? Oh, they are. <laughs> There's a couple of mouthfuls that we've got that's yeah. thoroughly enjoyable. Hey, you come out to places like this, you end up with a beautiful feed like this, you can't beat it. No, mate, that's precisely why we do it. I love to cook it as much as I love to catch it, I think. It's great. Yeah, I think I do too. You know, it's just, it's part of the adventure. That's right. You may as well use it, especially when it tastes like this. The thing that I really have enjoyed is the people. We're like a big family. In a day's training, I might go through anywhere between 300 and 500, possibly 600 rounds. I see uh, that firearms are an essential tool for the farmer. The first shot I ever did, it felt amazing. I felt glad that I actually did something that I felt passionate about. Shane, beautiful night for a bit of a bunny hunt, mate. It certainly is, mate. A bit of cloud cover. Nice and warm, nice and dark. Should be good. So what are we up to, mate? Well, look, these rabbits, you know, how did they get here? You know, I was reading a little bit about this before I come up, and the guy that gets the Darwin Award or Stupidity Award for introducing mm. them here in Australia is a guy known as Thomas Austin. You know, back in 1859, I was reading, he introduced 24 rabbits, let them go. He thought he'd make the place look a little bit like home. You know, he liked a bit of hunting. He was English then. He was English, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, 90 years later, there's 600 million rabbits, and it wasn't until they released the um, myxomatosis virus that they you know, brought them a little bit under control. That was ridiculous, the numbers yeah. that they're up to, wasn't it? Yeah. Definitely. I mean, they, they do do a lot of environmental damage, but I'll tell you what, there's been a lot of money spent by hunters over the years. Yeah. For chasing yeah. rabbits, a lot of money. Yeah, do you think that hunting is a, is a way to control them? Oh, it's definitely a way. It's certainly probably not enough. 
but it's definitely a way to control them. Yeah, yeah, you know, back in the day when Dad was younger, he used to always tell me about the stories about, you know, they'd hunt to put food on the table and plus they'd sell the skins. But, you know, these days, you know, the skins are obviously worth nothing, but there's still that possibility of putting them on the table and having a great meal out of them. Definitely, mate. They've got to be used for something. I mean, there's no point shooting them and wasting them, so we may as well put them to good use. Yep. So tonight, there's not as many rabbits around at the moment, but uh, how do we want to approach this? Um, we'll just sort of dawdle around, mate, with this new air rifle that we've got here, which is an interesting looking gadget. Quite a good thing to use in build up areas like we are at the moment. Small blocks and that sort of thing, they're quite quiet. Yep. You don't have to worry too much about ricochets, which is one of the things with 22s, they do have a tendency of ricocheting a bit, so yep. it'll be interesting to give well, it a go. Well, this thing is capable of putting out at about 1,100 feet per second, so it's got it's some... very quick. Yeah. All right, let's get it set up and uh, get out there. Just get a rest up against this big log here and we'll have a look. So the plan is not to light it up before we get set up, mate? No, mate. I'll we'll just keep them as quiet as possible. <laughs> Turn this big blood light on here. You alright? Yeah, I'm right, yeah. Yep, let's go. <laughs> He's a bit bright, this thing. Oh yeah, that thing's got some punch. Wrong. There's one. Yeah, I got it. Hang on, he's moving. Hang on, I'll open the fly up. It's too bright, I think. Yeah, the torch yeah. to open up a bit. Yeah. Here he is, he stopped. Okay, wait. I'll just open up the spot a bit and see if he sits there for you, mate. There you go. I got him. That's one. Turn up, he looks all right. Yeah, there's a nice little pocket of grass amongst all these trees and stuff. There's two there, see? Yeah, yeah. Right, just trying to get up to this tree. Just keep the light off him, like you say. Yeah, I'll just keep the light off him, not spook him. Alright, let me just so get in come here. Come around beside you. Oh, nice shot, mate. It's another one out of the population. Yeah, a shame like in an area like this, you know, on a small farm, managed and uh, taking a few every now for the table, keeps them under control, you know, but left to their own devices, they can cause some real damage. They can certainly blow out of proportion like it's been shown over the years. They cause a lot of damage, the old rabbit. Yeah, look, I was reading that, you know, both environmental to plants and animals, we've lost a, a number of native species. That's right, yeah, through habitat loss, exactly. Yeah, to the little rabbit. Yeah, and hopefully soon to be turned into KFR. Yes, I'm looking forward to Dorso's secret herbs and spices. Yeah, Kentucky Fried Rabbit sounds pretty good to me, mate. It certainly does. What do you reckon? One more and uh, we're out of here? Yeah, we can grab another one. There's a fair few around, though, that's for sure. Okay. There should be more people out doing this. That's right, I mean... Good for the environment, good for us. Yeah, and it controls the numbers. Shane, that was a bit of fun. It sure was, wasn't it? Yeah, do you remember where we left them? They're hanging in trees so the foxes don't get them. <laughs> More importantly, where's the car? <laughs> this direction, I hope, mate. <laughs> When's the last time you shot all these animals with the same rifle? Now, you can do it for real. The Dimension bolt-action platform is the most advanced bolt-action rifle ever made. It shoots multiple calibers just by changing components and guarantees minute of angle accuracy. It's time to change the way you think about bolt-action rifles. The new Dimension bolt-action platform from Thompson Center.
What have you been doing over there, Corey? Your job, mate. Here you go. Rabbits as ordered. Leaping lizards. Leaping rabbit. rabbits. They look <laughs> fabulous. Where did you get them? The best part about this, it was five minutes from home. No kidding. I could have walked up and got them. You didn't walk? No, no. I'm too lazy to walk. Too lazy to help you any further too, so <laughs> I'll leave it to you. I'll be no, outside no. sitting the table. Well, you put your apron on. You've always looked nice yeah, in a skivvy no, and an apron. apron. All right, I'll see you in a minute. No worries. So that's the last bit of rabbit off the carcasses and we're almost ready to put it in the pot and get it warmed up in the simmering water. So it's going from here, from the butcher's slab to the boiling water in the pot. So now what's needed is to partially cook in simmering water our rabbit because it's only going to be fried very lightly and it is quite dense meat. So we're going to leave it in here probably about 15 to 20 minutes, that should cover it. And then I think we'll be ready to take it out, dry it off and put it through the crumbing process. The very secret crumbing process that I'm only gonna share with you. So the rabbit's out of the water and it's cooled down and it's dried out. So now, all we have to do is crumb them in the very special secret recipe, which of course I'm going to share with our viewers. So right here in this bowl, I've got a couple of eggs, a little bit of milk and some crushed garlic. I'm going to put a third egg in there because it's got quite a lot of rabbit here. We we're very fortunate when the boys went out, they got a couple of really good rabbits. So we're pretty good. Now inside this, I'm also going to put a little bit of freshly chopped rosemary and some chili flakes. Not too much, because not everyone likes it spicy, but that little bit of hidden spice doesn't go astray. I'll just whip that up. That's pretty well there. Let's just put this into, we'll need to put this into a shallow bowl so that I can get the big bits of rabbit into it. This is the last of the secret recipes going into our milk wash, and that is dried, not fresh, dried basil. That'll give you just a little bit of undercurrent of flavor that'll leave everyone puzzled. Some people says it smells like dried tea leaves, but I think it smells like dried basil. Okay, so with this, first of all, we need to just put a little bit of light flour on it and then into the egg wash and then into these crumbs. Now you'll notice that these crumbs are slightly dark and that's another secret little bit of the recipe those crumbs have got just a little bit of sweet paprika in them. Again, not too spicy, but just a little bit to give you a nudge. And we'll keep going on these until we fill up and then we'll go back to the stove and start lightly frying these. Now the beauty of this is that we don't deep fry, we shallow fry. Probably about half an inch of um, oil. These are the bigger bits that look just like Kentucky Fried. But just here, I've got some small bits from the fillet of the rabbit. And these will have your kids thinking that you've bought them a nice set of nuggets. So we're going to do those at the end and do them separately and do them very quickly because they're small and they'll cook very fast. Now it's time to fry the rabbit. Let's go. Oh, listen to that sizzle. Beautiful. Let's try another piece. Let's not overload your pan though. Shouldn't overload your pan. The two pieces are gonna be good. We just wanna fry it a little bit on each side. Remember, we've actually partially cooked the meat. Oh, look at that color. Lovely color. Okay, so now we can those look as though they're getting along quite nicely. We'll put a third one in. Here's a tip though, if the kids are around, cook the nuggets first. Then while you're mucking around with the bigger bits, and probably telling bad dad jokes, the kids can be chomping on something delicious. Now they're coming up to a beautiful color now. Fantastic, don't you think? Now part of that is due to 
the secret additive of paprika in the breadcrumbs, which adds a little bit of tingle to the tongue and a little bit of colour to the crumb. Corey, I thought you were supposed to lay the table. Oh, well, I was hanging out with my buddy here. Anyway, isn't this finger looking good? Well, <laughs> the proof of that is in the pudding. Let Do me you want give to you take it? Thanks, mate. Uh, you hang on to him. Excellent. You got him? Otherwise, the vacuum's going to take the lot. I'll be paying the great Yeah, <laughs> that looks good. Uh, you get your own, you get some. Dorsus looks fantastic. I'm going to grab a bit. Shane, are you going to have it? some? Oh, I'd like to, but oh. no, oh. hang on. Yeah. <laughs> OK, look, Let's there are in. some kids' nuggets there that yeah. Finbar can probably have, seeing as we haven't got any kids. Yeah, yeah, well, he's a big kid. Well, he's four this week, wasn't he? <laughs> he was four on Halloween. All right. Mm. I'm going to get oh. one of them, because I reckon I'll be able to stick it in my gob. Yep. Oh. Mm. Nugget. Easy. Well, oh, well, good point. Very it's good. beautiful, Doss. Very nice. Yep. Boys, put those cameras down. Come in and have some. Yeah, you can have some popcorn. <laughs> hey, I'll feed you. Come on, Johnny. <laughs> grab yourself a, grab yourself a finger licking good Here, Johnny. Um, piece of thingo. There we go. You got your. Fishing gear. Yeah, got the high tech. Was that expensive? <laughs> At least I've got a bend in my rod. <laughs> Already. Nah, all you need is a bit of a line and some uh, leftovers, it's a bit of meat, a bit of chicken. Got a bit of venison, yeah. Yeah. So, oh, what are we doing? The venison went, come to good use, so the leftover bits, didn't they? Could use it. Yeah, all right. Let's uh, get up here and see if we can find one. I don't really like that one. Neither did I. Me either. I'm not going no. anywhere. Hunting the Menu, proudly brought to you by the Sporting Shooters Association of Australia. Join us at ssaa.org.au.